All right, we are live once again. <sighs> Hi there. Oh, I have to mute my preview. I don't know who's watching, but that's okay. We'll get into it in a moment. I was just uh, I was just playing around with my audio setup a little bit because I realized that all of my settings were kind of still really weird, and I never really tuned them properly because I never could particularly monitor them properly, but now I can, which is nice. So that's exactly what I did. Uh, got rid of that awful noise suppressor that made me sound like an MP3 and all that good stuff, and we are back for what I'm hoping is another fantastic stream. Uh, I don't know. I have doubts about that. It's been awful quiet with the Somnolians lately. Everyone's been gone, and, uh, well, you know, it happens. But that's all right. I, uh, I'll just play, you know? That's the beauty of this. I'm playing a video game, and as a result, it doesn't it doesn't doesn't much matter. I suppose I will always find something to talk about because I never shut up. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess I should just get the game on screen. I had been playing around with it to try and get some of the settings fixed a little bit. Do let me know if you're here, by the way, uh, whoever's in the chat. But transition. I don't know. I had trouble figuring out what I wanted to play, and I'm still easing back into this. Didn't really feel like playing much of anything important or serious, so I decided let's play Postal 2, which is a game I have not played in years. And if you've never heard of it, and uh, you're you 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 kind of easily turned off by people dying a lot, you might not want to watch this. But if you are, if you like fun, it's a good time. It's a real good time. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get to playing it honestly, because this is a game I've had a history with, and it's a game I like a lot. So I'm just gonna start a new game. We're not gonna be going crazy with it. I don't know. I kind of figured that more people would uh would at least be in the chat. Normally it's a lot of somnolians, you know. Um, and all, it's been me and Cabby all day basically, and just kind of waiting for her to pop up. Because I mean she is home now. But yeah, Postal 2, uh, I could, that is 2003, right? Yep. Yeah. Postal 2 was basically, it's a game that came out at the height of people asking if, hi, Cabby, there you are. It, it was a game that came out at the height of people asking, you know, are video games dangerous? Are these teaching our children to kill? So what does Running With Scissors do after creating one of the best, not really best, but one of the most unique games with the first Postal, which you play a spree killer, uh, they made an even more violent game. So, and uh, They also found a sense of humor, which is uh, very useful if you're making a game as, as dark and spooky looking as this. So yeah, Postal 2 kind of ended up taking on a cult following with uh, people who got the joke. And uh, yes, that is a that is a man in a ball sack costume. I'm not doing anything unique or particularly special because this is basic stream fodder kind of game. But whatever. I always like the difficulties because there's so many of them. Uh, you know, you can basically take all of the guns away entirely, right up to the point where everyone is trying to kill you on sight. So you get you get a lot of quote-unquote replay value but that's not why anyway i'm gonna play on very hard just just because and i'm only gonna be doing monday through friday i'm not gonna bother with the week in paradise not yet anyway yeah yeah i know all this stuff so like i kind of was mentioning the original postal was an isometric shooter type game uh where you played a spree killer and it was a very dark and twisted game, and honestly not a whole lot like it in 1997, and it hasn't aged especially well, but, you know, it was alright. I certainly got my, I don't even know how much it was out of it. But then, Running With Scissors was like, and yeah, that's a company named Running With Scissors, they were like, well, you know what, we want to make a game that is totally open world, like a living city kind of thing. And that's, that's exactly what they ended up doing. So, 
apparently they're based out of Arizona, which I've never been to Arizona. Although, it frankly, looks like kind of a, a shithole, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, and they made a, you know, a living, breathing city where there's cats and drunk people dancing around and gay bars and cops and... <laughs> I don't know. That's a good game. I know. I'm just gonna skip the cutscene. This is gonna be an interesting day. Cause I don't even I don't even care. I've seen all this. Hi Niku. I didn't know what else to play, so I decided to play this. Right, so anyway, so as I was saying, yeah, I can believe they ported Quake to the DS. I can believe it. So their whole take on the whole trend, I suppose, of violent video games is that you don't actually have to kill a single person in post Two. You don't. Know, you just, the game does not require you to kill a single person. Not once. But you can if you want to. And that's kind of the way everyone plays it. But I, uh, I don't know. I've done pacifist runs of it, mostly for the achievements. So, you know, I've been, I've been on every kind of end of the spectrum here. And I think, as I mentioned in the last stream, I had found this after a friend of mine recommended it to me. It's a friend who I, I actually still occasionally talk to. It's Aaron. Um... And he was like, you know, have you ever played Postal 2? It sounds like your kind of game. Uh, I'm like, no, I've never even heard of it. And for the longest time, I don't think it's available for this anymore. For the longest time, this game was 99 cents on Steam. A dollar. And I more than fucking got my money out of that. Because, I don't know. Hello? I heard someone. Ow! Fucking dog. Oh yeah, you can kick dogs if you want to. Die! I don't have any fucking guns! God. Go away! Oh yeah. I forgot. This is why this is basically the best game in the world. You can... You can piss. Did I mention that? You can piss. I gotta find more of that good stuff. Game of the year. I don't know. It feels weird playing this because it seems like the kind of game that, I don't know, everyone's already played. But I guess that's what makes it fun. You know, I can't deny fun. Are you into piss? I'm absolutely... I am not Leroy, no. But it is... It's, it's a good time. Oh, there's still the dog. The dog is still chasing me. Go away. Oh, <laughs> I killed it. I'm just looking for a gun, honestly. That's that's the one thing. Oh, that's a scientist. Now the flowers will grow. It's a scientist. I'm literally just looking for a gun right now. Because it's like the most normal thing you can do in this game is murder. Hey! You know when you just keep a shotgun in your bathroom? I guess that's Arizona for you. So yeah, this game takes place in a little fictional town called Paradise. And the whole point of it, even though I skipped over it, is that you have a bunch of errands to do. I know, the game has you running fucking errands. But it's more fun than that, I promise. So the whole point of it is that you go to all these places, and you do something, and, uh... Well, the rest of it's up to you, in all honesty. If you want to be a, a good Samaritan, you can. If you want to break into people's houses, you can. Die. Got him. Mm. 
There's not a lot of weaponry around right now, but you wait until the end of the week and the game just gives you progressively more. Because the whole point of it is that you're not... You have to retire back to your house at the end of the day, and then another day starts, you know? Ah, that's the stuff. I don't know if I necessarily call it... I don't know, it's kind of like GTA, I suppose. GTA is a lot more scripted, I would say. You're kind of doing uh, missions and stuff more than you are running errands. Postal 2 is very open world. You literally have free reign over the city. Hello? Somebody had the... Where? Where are you? Oh! Oh, fuck. I was going to use those people as meat shields. But uh, I guess I, I suppose I'm not. Ow. Stop shooting me. Oh, the AI in this game is so fantastic. One thing you should know about all running with scissors games, basically, is that they're all really bad. They're not, like, the most competently put together is probably the thing I can say. Hi, baby. Who, Who am I? No. And one to grow on. Yeah, did I mention people can take multiple shots to the head? You wanna you wanna know how old this game is? You look on all the computers and they all have old man Murray on them. That's how old these uh, this game is. All right, you know what? Let's try to actually play the fucking game because everybody's already done the whole rampage thing. It's kind of it's all dead and over, except this guy. I don't like him. <laughs> how many shots to the head can a forest spirit say? I'm not answering that. That's not what they're meant for. I'm not answering that. I don't know what you're looking at. Oh, I'm out of bullets. That's why. I'm out of bullets. I mostly want to find my machete. I had a, I have a machete in my other save. I, I really need to find one again. Because they're like the best weapon in the game. Ow. She insulted my penis. She deserved it. Have I ever played Postal 1? Yes, I have. Postal 1 is, uh... I mean, I enjoyed it. I would definitely probably take Redux over it. I, I enjoyed Redux a whole lot more. But, Postal 1 is fun. I enjoyed my time with Postal 1. Oh, the game has... Because, you know, they couldn't simulate just a straight-up whole world, so they do split it into different levels. And every time you see a load zone, that's a load zone. Ow! Jesus. I'm just trying to walk to the store. Stop shooting me. I really should have beat this game... Last night, because this copy of my this copy of the game, because I haven't beaten it, doesn't have the enhanced mode yet, or maybe it did. Hold up. Hold up. Did did we have enhanced mode? No, no enhanced mode. Enhanced mode is what makes the game a, a whole lot more fun to look at, honestly. Um. It didn't save. There it is. My autosave. Uh, and that's actually where the title of the the stream comes from. Because one of the, my favorite things to do was to fly around on a shovel, smoke health pipes, and kill people. Oh yeah, I have to get goat milk, don't I? God, what's that awful stench? That's the ticket. So, Did someone slaughter a goat in here? No, seriously, I want to know. Since Niku seems to be the only one watching the stream at current, do I get the milk and pay for it, or do I just run out the back? What do I do? What do I do? Pay 
pay for the milk? Too easy. Okay, I guess. Go pay the cashier or not. Is there a line? Alright. Alright, fuck you, I guess. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's it? Alright. I actually ne I don't think I paid for it before. Alright. I was expecting there to be some weird cutscene where, uh, like, people would descend from the store. I don't know, I'd get caught in the middle of a jihad, but uh, apparently not. By the way, this was right in the middle of the Iraq War, so there are Muslims and Al-Qaeda all over this game. And weird terrain you get stuck on. Come on. Oh. Sorry, hold on. I need to check something. It's, it's quiet, Mon. It very much is. Although I guess I do have some things I could ramble about. Because, I mean, I'm not so much... Uh... Oh, it's alright. Again, it's quiet. Because I'm not so much playing Postal as I am just kind of like... Fighting my time, I suppose. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a sleepy day. That's why I walk on power lines. It's a sleepy day. Um. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Nope, nope, nope. I missed it. I missed the jump. I missed the jump. Oh, well, whatever. I missed the jump. Um. Oh, and if you see a running with scissors sign, that means you're getting close to uh, running with scissors. I'm telling you, this game is expertly put together. There's not a game like this. This game is next level. Ow. I do have guns, right? Yeah, kind of. Uh, we're gonna not imagine that, Niku. Thank you. That's the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do think there's a couple guns uh, in in the backyard of Running with Scissors. Again, it's been a little while. I was playing it a little last night, but it's been a while. No, just a bunch of money. Oh. It's all good. Things open up later on in the week, which is a good reason. Oh my god. Alright. Come on. Come get it. Come get it. Um, I think the only one I can think of that's actually banned is New Zealand. Which. I mean. Oh, come on. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go, girl. Hey, Vince is in his office. You better go see him. Thanks. Cammy has also been in 15 countries. That's why. That's why you have to come here. You have to come here to enjoy me, Cabby. Because I'm banned in a bunch of places. I definitely need mm. that stuff. Really works. I mean, if we're really getting on the topic of, uh, you know, banning things and, and censorship, the whole thing is that... Oh, by the way, Mike J's office is the bathroom. I'm telling you, Old Man Murray is all over this game. <sighs> I really wonder who all these people are. These are some pretty decent fucking photos, too. Like... Like, who are these people? I mean, that's Yeehaw right there. It's Mr. Yeehaw. And then it's just somebody's ass. Oh, these are recent? Look, he's got a phone. Yeah, these are recent. This wasn't here. I don't think this is running with scissors. I would hope not. I, I'm reasonably sure it's not running with scissors. Uh, th that kid looks 14. Actually, he looks like the same kid. No, hair's different. Hair's different, and that one looks, like, squished. It's weird. 
I don't know. I'm bad with faces. But yeah. The thing is, you can't ban things out of existence. And that's sort of been the, the whole thing for the longest time. By the way, I, I, I'm offended that you can't play fucking video games in uh, this game. You could in like earlier builds of it, but they took all of the uh, arcade games out. More guns. Oh, and gasoline. So you can do my absolute favorite thing in the whole world. Hey, you. <laughs> uh, it never gets old. All right, anyway. So, yeah, I have to... Uh... Nothing personal, man, but you're fired. But I just started yesterday. <laughs> Ow. I don't know who it is. I really don't know who it is. Oh, I'm curious, though. Fun fact, by the way, if you kill all the protesters, the game will actually spawn more just so this cutscene can happen. True story. I'm telling you, I've played way too much of this game. And a cat just comes running out. Ow! Ow! What the hell was that? How I couldn't get out of the room. Okay, so I have to do that again. That's nice. That was not fucking fair. Although I do have a machine gun if I need to. No. Fuck you. My president is Chuck Heston. Here's your rebate, you damn dirty apes. Fuck it. Ah, they are all armed. No, go away. Jesus, I think I have it. Oh, I do. That's good. This can't be good for me, but I feel great. I actually really like the game, uh, the way that Postal Two implements the health pipes, because what they do is that they give you a temporary boost. That's true. I am always right. I still am. Always have been. Um, but it gives you a temporary boost above one hundred percent. And as long as you can keep up your crack habit, it's perfectly fine. Ah, go away. God. Okay, let's try that again. Hey, Vince is in his office. You better go see him. Thanks. How about my pee-pee? What do you think of my pee-pee? What do you think of my dick? Now the flowers <laughs> I forgot about that. If you piss on Mike J, he just starts twerking. That's great. Anyway. Anyway, let's try to get out of the building in one piece this time. But anyway, if you can't keep up your crack cap, then eventually you'll take a massive damage uh, hit. See, they spawn a couple extra ones, so they can have them storming the building. So yeah, on the topic of banning things, it's not so much a matter of the pictures of Postal 2 fans. I'm heading out the back. I don't give a fuck. Plus, I think this is the way towards the tank. Ow. Oh, come on. Go away. Oh. What the fuck? Where did you get a fucking billy club? Go away. Go away, you hobo. You actually crazy hobo. Go away. I'm just waiting for the later parts of the game so I can actually get fucking cool weapons. Seriously. The machete in this game is kind of insane. Uh, because you can throw it. And if you know the proper timing, you can actually kick it and keep it in the air. It's pretty great. Um... 
And that's one of my favorite things to do, especially since it can decap people. It's pretty great. Um, I think I'll need to keep an eye out for these folks. They're definitely hazardous to my health. So, uh, people have this weird concept. Do I like sandbox games? I mean, I suppose so. They're not like games I tend to seek out or anything, especially if they're way too big, but... Some of my favorites have been sandboxes. I kind of debated playing San Andreas for this stream because it seems like a little bit more of a uh, a less streamed kind of game. Although I don't know. I kind of don't pay attention to other people's streams. I barely pay attention to my own. But yeah, people have this weird concept that you can just ban something and it goes away. But there's always... If, if people want it, there's a way to get it. So when people like ban... Like Postal 2, for example... I don't fucking feel like playing Parappa. Um, people are always recommending me games, and I don't feel like playing the games I want to play, let alone what other people want me to play. I'll get to it. I don't know. Um, sorry, I just had to. I, I just got paranoid. I had to check OBS real quick. So I got to remember where the hell the bank is. I think it's on the other side of town, right? Yeah. It's fair. Um I don't know, people people nowadays I don't I don't know how political I necessarily want to get, but people have this weird concept that the uh the government is anything more than the people who can build roads and occasionally shoot people like they think that you know if the government can just whisk something away and then it doesn't exist uh which is the reason i don't tend to like any of those you know dirty european countries because they always have these these weird concepts it's like it's all right we'll just regulate it out of existence we'll just ban it it's fine yeah i am legally obligated to throw myself through windows by the way um it doesn't happen like that by the way, you can eat dog treats, and this happens if you do. Yeah, China is pretty much the greatest example of how controlling things uh, will inevitably bite you in the ass. Because it's actually weird. In some ways, China is very much a laissez-faire, like, totally unregulated, fuck-it-do-whatever kind of uh, market. But for everybody else, they are the most totalitarian shit. And, I mean, you don't need me to tell you how awful fucking China is. Or how they're doing, because, you know, China's going to be dead in a decade. Their growth is like a major fucking hyperbubble, and it just... Ah... Uh... There we go. Yeah, people around town will eventually just... Start to be like, oh, it's that guy. And then randomly start shooting you on sight. And then if you like that, there's an entire difficulty where everybody is like that. In fact, there are multiple. And I had to beat the game all one in order to get uh, one of the achievements. I had 100% achievements for this game at one point before par I bought Paradise Lost. And now I don't anymore. I still, I still have to beat Paradise Lost. I probably should have played Paradise Lost. Anyway, this is the cool way to enter the bank. <laughs> you just enter the bank. You kick the ATM. You go in the back. And then you just you take all the money from the vault. It's true. Trust me on this. I know this. And by the way, the money in the vault actually respawns. So you can grab it today and come back every single day and keep grabbing more and more of the money. It's true. It's great. There we go. Mission accomplished with extreme prejudice. Time to head home.
Anyway, we're not gonna exit the bank in the normal way. We're gonna we're gonna go out the cool person way. See ya. Mostly because I needed uh, a little bit of extra firepower. No, I'm not. Go away. I knew that stuff wasn't good for me. Oh shit! I need more health pipes. So, what about Hong Kong? I mean, I know Hong Kong was trying to, you know, throw off the shackles of tyranny. And, you know, bless them for that. But what, what about Hong Kong? What about Chinese systems? I feel like shit. There we go. This can't be good for me, but I feel great. China. Oh, God. I was about to buy more health pipes, but I guess not. Oh, I've actually never seen this ladder. Come on. What's up here? Anything good? I guess not. I was lied to. any of the cutscenes but no one will know what will happen to Hong Kong once there's no longer once it no longer becomes an autonomous region in why 2047 specifically oh I have to get the petition god damn you know, I don't feel like that. We're gonna go hunt Al Qaeda. I don't consider China to be much of a threat, uh, except for the fact that they are a nuisance when it comes to. Um... Oh shit. Oh, this is strange. Was this here before? I mean, I've been down. Oh shit! Ow. Yes. Yes, we have. All right. Uh, so the thing about China is that I don't consider them much of a threat because... Oh, Jesus. Ugh. Um, but I do consider them a nuisance when it comes to a lot of hacking and a lot of uh, interference and also surveillance. Uh... Anytime you hear of some major botnet that's taking over a bunch of smart home devices, which, by the way, are the most awful things I've ever seen. Uh, but, again, you didn't need me to tell you that. Just kidding. Um, once, you, once you see that one of these things happen, it's, it's almost always China. Okay, alright, shit, you've made your point, fuck. Kill the grenade boy. That man has impeccable accuracy, given that he is firing a fucking automatic. Anyway, there we go. Come on, go away. Go away. Ah, there's more of them. Out of here. Go. Stop shooting me. So, the thing is that China's entire economy is kind of just... It's all based off basically speculation. Uh, you know, they had this period of, oh my god, go away. All right, I'm going to pause the game real quick because I have something to say. So their entire economy is based off of basically rapid fucking growth by multinational corporations. And once, once China stops being the most profitable place to host everyone's fucking manufacturing, they're gone. China cannot compete. China has nothing. China does not have. I'm trying to think of what make what makes the U.S. other than, of course, our rights, our freedoms, and our uh, incredibly educated population. I'm trying to think of what what makes us different from them. 
you know? Hmm. Well, rip fucking Hong Kong. They have the right idea, but uh, I don't. I don't know. I hear uh, sticks sometimes talk about how um, we should take in Hong Kong as a fucking um, as a colony, which you know I'm on board for. I think we could do with some. Uh, I think we could do with some new colonies, some new territories. Spread the uh, spread the good word of capitalism. Otherwise, you get fuckers like this. Alright, I really need to use an automatic in here. You know, the way these guys are positioned reminds me a whole fucking lot of the way I used to play Gary's Mod. And I would just spawn a shit ton of Combine soldiers in a map. And then sneak around it with a gun and Definitely just take them all that. down methodically. It's fun. Man, Gary's Mod. That's a game I haven't played in... When was the last time I played Gary's Mod? I don't remember. Gary's Mod, what a fucking game. I used to make uh, levels and stuff for it. I do appreciate Gary's Mod. I appreciate it a lot, but I have to say, the game about nothing doesn't tend to hold my interest. Plus, I don't know, I fell out of pretty much every single first person shooter I ever played after uh, I got out of the Quake scene. Because they're all a bunch of fucking dickheads. And every so often I'm reminded that they fucking exist. I think I've talked about them on stream before. Oh my god. Go away. Yeah. Fucking yeah, that's what Burka Berserkers. Go away. I don't know. Today's the first day of the end of your lives. Do we still have another person? Oh my god. You can't even see him. I... I would be amazed if you could see him through all of the stream garble, honestly. I could barely see him on my screen. Um, but yeah, I think the U.S. should just start taking shit over again. I think that'd be fucking great. Uh, I propose Wales, first and foremost. No reason. Oh, nice grenades. Nice. Um, I propose we do Wales first, but, um, you know, there's, there's a couple others on the list. I think Hong Kong, they have the right idea. They could make for some fine Americans and... Uh, well, they don't seem stupid. Is this the way out? Closed until Wednesday. Alright, I guess we're not going that way then. I guess it's only deeper into the Al-Qaeda base we go. Seriously, this game is so 2003. It hurts. Shit. Although I need health bad. Actually, let me see. I have a couple donuts. That's, that's about all I have is donuts. Which is fine. No! Go away! Um. <laughs> There's more of them! They're, they're hidden behind a garage door. Ooh! That was a good shot! Oh, shit. 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 Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Oh, well, there's one. Did they run back in? Huh. Strange. It's kind of weird having seen my political opinions and everything kind of shift over the past... Over the past year or so. I've, I've become a whole lot more right-leaning, I suppose. I know it's a terrible tragedy, but at the same time, you know, America, there could be a lot worse places to be. There fucking really could be. No! No! Somebody's a rocket launcher! Go away! Christ. Kill the rocket man. Ow! Alright, listen. I'm not getting out of here alive, I guess. I guess I'm not getting out of here alive. Whatever. Fuck it. 
I guess libertarian is probably the better way to to put what I what I believe in currently. I like whatever makes people able to just do their own thing. I think that's the the easiest and safest way to handle this shit. Oh my god. He's in the water. Did I get him? I got him. I'm a little into programming. I always want to do it more than I do. Oh my god. Go. Away. Lordy. I want to learn some flavor of assembly. I, uh... Because I've always wanted to... I've always wanted to program for a bunch of, uh... Older consoles. And especially older, um... Computers. But I am... I have doubts as to whether or not I'm technically proficient enough to do it. Um, because assembly is, I'm sure as you know, as low as it gets basically other than writing straight machine code. In a way, it kind of makes computers infinitely less confusing and infinitely more confusing. Because, ah, uh, Fuck, I thought I got him. Uh, you know what, we're just gonna turn around. We're just gonna... We're just gonna turn around, because apparently... Apparently I'm not prepared enough for this. Um, because when you realize that a computer at its core is literally just like... You're just putting values into parts of memory, and then you're reading them out, and then there's like... Uh, what are they called? Registers? Uh, you know, registers on the processor itself to store bits of memory into, and then, you know, you do whatever you need to on them, and then you push it back out. It's at its core, it's a giant calculator that's putting things in a spreadsheet. And I think that's both really impressive, demystifies it a whole lot, and makes it infinitely more confusing. Because you have to worry about pretty much your your entire, um, what do you call that? You have to, you have, basically have to worry about everything that's in memory. You have to keep track of it all yourself. And anytime you actually have to do something at the processor level, you have to call that. You have to, if you want to accumulate a value... You have to go away. You have to call that. It's not like it's not like a um, you know a higher level language where it kind of takes care of a lot of the automation for you. And I feel like I don't know. I feel like I need. Oh my god, go away! I feel like I need two lifetimes basically to do everything that I, I want to do because I'm so interested in all sorts of stuff. Um, although I suppose that's why I'm trying to, you know, that's why I'm trying to make the, the best use of my time now as I can, because I know I have a whole lot that I want to do, you know, I mean, I still have a bunch of albums and, you know, music and what have you left in me. I'd like to eventually learn to draw. Uh, I'd like to continue writing. Writing various things. By the way, I, I'm so sleepy I forgot to mention this, but I, uh, there's something new on the, the Somnol blog that uh, I spent a couple I spent a, a couple weeks writing on and off. I should probably I should probably pull that up. Let me see if I can pull that up. That is not the right Vivaldi window, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um that's not the right Vivaldi window. What are you doing? I don't have time for this show. I'm just gonna put it into the chat. But yeah, if you uh, if you want to read something that I spent a whole lot of time writing actually, and it just came out today, uh, I looked back on this big Nirvana box set of stuff that 
you know, a bunch of outtakes and demos and B-sides and alternate mixes and things and what they did right and what they did wrong. So I'd like to keep writing because I think I've got, I think I've got a knack for it. Uh, and of course my various projects. All right. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, and I'd also like the program, you know. I have some experience programming. Uh, mostly higher level stuff, very high level stuff. I'm not claiming to be a particularly brilliant programmer, but I've also never really worked on that at all. I think I did a little bit with Quake C. That's kind of the most recent experience that I have with it. I did want to learn JavaScript, but every single time I want to learn JavaScript, it's like, eh... I don't have anything to really use it for, so I never do. You kind of need to have an idea of something to do with the language before you do it. Oh man, I missed it! I missed it. Apparently these guys are already dead. I missed the parade. Damn. Absolutely tragic. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's so much that I... And I'm going to want to do more and more, you know? I guess I should finish this fucking petition. So let me go bother somebody about this. Hey, dipshit. Could you please sign my petition? You're not even looking. Ow. Would you like to sign my petition? <laughs> oh, God. Alright, I'm out. I'm out. Would you please sign my petition? No way, you freaking pinko. Look, just sign the stupid petition. I've got stuff to do. No way, you freaking pinko. You gotta be fucking what? kidding. Are you gonna sign this, or will it be your surviving family members? Hey. What the? Well, I guess that's not gonna happen. But yeah, I would like to learn a flavor of assembly at some point. Probably, I don't know. I've always wanted to make an Atari game. I know that's kind of a, a, a real pain in the ass, even as far as assembly goes. But it sounds like a fun challenge. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of interest in a lot of the classic consoles, the Nintendo, Genesis, all that. I've kind of, I've kind of grown sick of it, honestly. But um, other than that, um, you know, some flavor of it, I suppose. Just, just for the, the sake of having done it. Um, whew. God, I'm sleepy. Yeah. All right, I guess I should start asking Would people. You please sign my petition. Okay, I'll do it. Thanks. Cool, cool, cool. Hi there. Would you like to sign my petition? You gotta be fucking kidding. Look, just sign the stupid petition. I've got stuff to do. I'm sorry. Shit. Are you gonna sign this or will it be your surviving family members? Okay. Oh, she pissed herself. She pissed herself. <laughs> I forgot she did that. Would you please sign my petition? All right. Hi there. Would you like to sign my petition? Sorry, yo. You gotta be sign my petition, damn it. Sure thing. Thanks. Cool, cool. Would you please sign my petition? Okay, I'll do it. Thanks. Thanks. She didn't even put up a fucking fight that time. That was nice of her. Anyway. Oh, yeah. See, that's the thing I really like about this game. The whole open world thing isn't just open world. It's that NPCs will also interact with each other and occasionally kill each other. It's pretty great. 
It's not like particularly intelligent interaction or anything, but it's a, it's a decent facsimile of it. Um, anyway, just to keep chat going. Um, you know what I've been thinking about lately? Thinking about a whole lot. I'm just going to ramble here. This has absolutely nothing to do with Postal. I've been thinking about old MP3 players a lot. And I... Ooh. Okay, I got stuck. Um, specifically iPods. Because I have had quite a few iPods over the years. And it just got me thinking that the entirety of 2000s technology was basically there and then it wasn't. Because it was there. It was shiny. It was high tech. It was new. And it totally got negated by the internet. And that fascinates the shit out of me. Because it's like oddware in real time. You know? You already have kids who, you know, basically grew up in the age of streaming. And they're like, wait, you know. Aside from vinyl. You know, occasionally you'd have kids who are like, oh, you know. It's cool. It's, uh, it's a big album. And then they don't fucking listen to it. Because streaming is infinitely more convenient. Um... I should mention that I, I keep a physical music collection. I always have. I always will. I have no desire to go full streaming because I just... I don't subscribe to things from a convenience first perspective. I, I want that I want that choice. I want that choice and I want to own my music. You know, so it, it's always a little bit disheartening to see the way that people kind of devalue physical music. Could you please sign my petition? I don't think so. You gotta be... Look, just sign the stupid petition. I've got stuff to do. No thanks. Are you gonna sign this, or will it be your surviving family members? Okay, I'll do it. Yeah, the postal workers, you literally have to threaten them before they'll sign your petition. And the cops never will. The cops will always tell you to fuck right off. And I think the running with scissors guys will always sign it. And you know what? I'm gonna try that right now. Watch. So this is another postal guy. Hi there. Would you like to sign my petition? Fuck that. You gotta be sign my petition, damn it. Sorry. Shit. Sign this petition or I'll follow you home and kill your dog. Okay. I can do that. Yeah. Thanks. You have to speak the language of the postal worker, which is pure unbridled fucking anger. If only Borb was here so we could talk about Pennyverse, but yeah, I guess not. What are you doing? You fucking weirdo. What are you doing wandering around in here? Got her. I'm an assassin. Perfect game. Yeah, I would say I like CDs. I like CDs quite a bit. I own... How many do I own? Probably has to be close to 130, 150 CDs at, the point, at this point. Um, maybe a little bit more. I've been collecting them ever since I was, what, 7 or 8 years old? Mostly just stealing them off of other people. Uh, but now I, I, I totally go, you know, legit and buy them for the most part. Especially since nobody has CDs anymore, so I can't leech them off uh, other people now. But, yeah. One stop. Would you please sign my petition? Okay. I guess that's yeah, see? Thing. He's one of the Thanks. Running With Scissors dudes, so he'll just sign it. I'm actually curious if Vince will sign it. You're not Vince. Fuck you. Where's Mike J? I actually burn CDs uh, still when I'm backing up uh, Simonolescent sites, and I've been thinking quite a bit lately about uh, data storage too. That's another thing. It's not just it's not just uh, you know CDs and uh, the way people listen to music. Oh my god! Uh, it's also data storage because think of all the different ways you had to store data. Oh, thank you. Hi there. Would you like to sign my petition? I guess that sounds pretty good. Cool. Petition over. Um, but it's also data storage. There used to be so many different ways of storing data. And now they're pretty much all obsolete because people are like, oh, just use the cloud. Like, why would I trust my data with a, with another company somewhere on the other side of that? There's Mike J. Why would I trust my data with a country, uh, with a company, you know, with data centers on the other side of the world? Uh, just because they have really lucrative rates and the convenience of not having to store this shit myself. My data isn't with me. And who's to say that data doesn't eventually get leaked? Who's to say that data doesn't get scrubbed? No, absolutely not. I want that shit to stay local. I want that to stay with me. Um, so, you know, you have... I was talking about 
uh, specifically disc burning with uh, DCB, because right now we use DVDs. Right now we use DVDs to back up our sites, but I only have single layer discs at the moment, so that's only f that's only like 4.7 gigs per disc. Uh, and I could upgrade to higher capacity ones, but to be perfectly honest, at this point I'm just kind of thinking of upgrading to an outright Blu-ray uh, writer because it's amazing to me that people will buy Blu-rays for movies. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that's 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 one thing I can absolutely agree on. Unless you're hinting at something, in which case, don't be a bitch. But anyway, so you gotta you gotta realize that Blu-rays are an incredibly fantastic way to store data. Hold on. You know, you have what, 20, 30 gigabytes for a single layer disc? For a dual layer disc that's like 40 to 60? Niku, why? Niku, why? <laughs> oh, Monald. Only, only you. But, um, I just don't, I don't understand why more people aren't using it. Because think of what you can do with that, right? Because, you know, you have basically two ends of the backup spectrum. You have, you always hear about people, oh, I need to back up my entire camera roll, right? So they're given like 15 gigs of cloud storage for fucking somewhere. And then it gets synced across all their devices. That's the low end of backing up. And then you have the extreme high end of backing up, which is like what people who, who work with 4 and 8K video on the daily, that's what they do. You know, so they, they need like fucking petabytes of storage. And it's like, well, Sonos works in the middle. We're power users. We generate a lot of data and we need good backup you know, solutions and preferably local ones, but we don't necessarily need fucking exabytes of storage you know we're not we're not at google levels and to be perfectly honest i get why people do 4k and i get why people do 8k video but um i would never i would never do it i would n i don't I, I i shouldn't say i don't see the appeal because i do see the appeal i just don't think i don't think it's a particularly worthwhile pursuit what the hell is back here Somebody burying someone in their backyard. Nice. Welcome to Arizona. Everyone's packing. And it's true. Uh, but with us, it's more a matter of we're constantly making stuff. You know, Cabby will have her project files. And assuming she's working at a decently big size, you know, the, the collapsed PNG on its own can be a couple megabytes. You know, let alone the project file for it, which, you know, is in the tens of megabytes. Uh, you have my music projects, which, you know, for something like in Freefall, where I didn't have any outtakes, that was already like, what, 160 megs? Uh, you know, and assuming I get working on music a whole lot more, you know, I that's not just the project files, that's also the renders. You know, if I'm storing them in FLAC, then, uh, you know, that's another 100, 200 megs or so. And again, that is a short album. If I make a 45, you know, 50 minute album, naturally that's going to be a whole lot more audio. If I have more tracks, it's going to be more audio. I have released uh, CDs. Uh, the issue right now is that I don't have anybody to release them to. Uh, I've debated it because back when I had, back when I was still in school, I made my ep my first ep various murky basements and i figured you know it's cool i have an album now and i can't just have it be a digital album so i took the flac files for it burned them onto a disc i actually made it a dual uh a mixed mode disc so it had a data part too um not that i really used it for a whole lot although i think i had already like pre-existing mp3s on the disc because i saw earl and mark do that and uh that was pretty cool um but i had you know the, the data part 
and you know it was just it was just a lot of fun and then i burned a couple copies of them and i had jewel cases you know and i had this thick cardstock stuff that i actually used uh and printed out a cup uh, a couple copies of you know quote unquote album artwork and then i kind of just went into school and i i you know, I think a couple people got them. I wasn't expecting anyone to keep them, but I don't have a copy of that anymore because, like, the four or five of them that I made, people were actually, like, straight up asking, like, hey, can I have a copy of that? I'm like, uh, uh okay. <laughs> and there were people who had heard it, too. I actually had a teacher, because this was towards the end of the year. This was late May or so. And I had a teacher, uh, our journalism teacher, uh, outright, um... I had our journalism teacher like outright play my album just on his speakers. <sighs> Sleepy day. Um, and he did. And people like actually were into it. It's weird. No. What I have is I have the master disc. The extra one that I had made. And that, I still have that. Um, but that didn't come in packaging. That one was meant for my collection. I don't have a copy of the packaging anymore. Um, so if I had people to give them to, I probably would have made CDs for in free fall. And plus I remember reading this conversation once where somebody pretty much made the claim that if it was not released physically, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, the music just doesn't matter. And I, I get to thinking like, is that true? And... I'm inclined to say yes, because I get that, you know, you have music released on net labels or you have tracker music or something like that, where the internet is the primary mode of distribution. But if you don't have it in physical, I think at the very least, with the, all of the different ways that we have of storing data, I think at the very least that shows a, a, a lack of... what do you call that like a lack of care isn't the right word but kind of getting close to it um like there's an album that i got really really like into uh right around this time last year and it's called uh i actually have a review of it on my site down the stairs and to the left by midwestern dirt and it was just self-released on Bandcamp. it had you know it was on all the you know streaming services and what have you uh the issue being that it never got a physical release and i mean it only came out last year and it's some kind of no-name artist but it was an album that i really really liked and i'm hoping one day he goes through and you know at least makes some kind of print run because that's an album that i want to keep that's an album that I will 100% pay for on, I don't care if it's a CDR, I don't care if it's a properly burnt and mastered disc, or a proper, like a stomped disc, you know, something that came off of a pressing line, I don't care. As long as it's in physical, I will I will take that, you know? And I, you, you could potentially make the case that it's like, oh, just burn it to CDR yourself, but yeah, where's the fun in that, you know? I want packaging. Even if it's just like something... Um, even if it's just a little something, you know, it's still like, oh, I own the CD now, you know, and bonus points if they go crazy with it. Like I said, with various murky basements, I had it on a mixed mode audio CD. So there'd be two partitions when you put it into your computer, there would be the normal disc, you know, CD audio part. But then if you put it into your computer, there would be art, there would be, I think I had an extra track, um, which was a frankly a fucking meme track but what have you um and i th i don't know i find that really cool i find that the the art of the enhanced cd has been lost it doesn't it doesn't exist anymore really i think the last enhanced cds i can think of from 2002 just kind of a, kind of a waste you know because i thought they were a lot of fun and potentially if i were to make a new album and I would actually get it pressed. Um, 
whatever I would send off to get that thing pressed, I would, I don't know, maybe have like a shockwave thing, you know? Because that's what all the enhanced CDs were made out of, was, uh, you know, just a, a shockwave thing and director running on the machine locally for, you know, all the animations and the fancy shit going on. And I really need to get to Gary Coleman. Um, but, you know, I just found it neat. I find it really neat, and I find that the way it's been rapidly sort of made obsolete is uh, sad. Hello, Mr. Coleman. I love facts of life. Did you ever do that leather Tuscadero chick? Here you go. It's for my mother, I swear. Yeah. Yeah, I actually have burned a video CD just to see what it was like, and um. To be perfectly honest, it just kind of looked like a bad YouTube video. Uh, it's not so much that they're pointless as a storage medium. Send out the former child actor. We have a warrant for his arrest. Go back to the donut convention. I ain't going nowhere. We're serious. Send Gary out now and nobody gets hurt. Lieutenant Grossman tried to warn us. I'm not going to the joint. All right. Well, I gotta get the fuck out of here. Um, video CDs are cool. I dig them. You know? They're not terribly difficult to burn. I just, uh, I just don't really have a use for them, you know? But I think it would probably... I think it'd be cool if I, if I were to do more video stuff. I think it would be kind of cool to uh, potentially release something on video CD just just for the like what the fuck factor you know because you know like i said we're already on blu-ray which i never did finish my thought about that but you know you have so much storage on one disc potentially that's good as another you know feather in the cap of you know like a three two one backup plan you know you have three copies of your data on two formats one of which is off-site um discs are as good as ever you know and there's a, there's a whole lot of them. You might you might as well use them, you know. And there's so. Oh shit! Nice. So we got body armor. We got shells. We got money, and we got pipe. Nice. Uh yeah, I suppose. Although I think part of the appeal for me for a CD is you know being able to play it in a standard player. You know I find that very appealing that sort of backwards compatibility that people have with a format occasionally you know not not always but sometimes you'll see things being supported way way long beyond their their best by date essentially and i find it cool i find it uh you know i find it special and it says something about the longevity of that format because the whole thing is Digital itself, I be honest with you. Yeah, all good. Very sleepy. The whole thing about digital itself is that it's a very new thing. I mean, the '80s were not that long ago. You know, when this stuff started to come off the line in the first place. Then the '90s rolled around, and we finally had outright digital audio. You know, be coming to the masses. Whether that be the explosion of CDs in the early '90s or MP3s in the late '90s. You know, suddenly digital audio became the thing. And now people don't think about it again because, you know, although most people could tell you what an MP3 is, it's not it's not a matter of, you know, you're not syncing with anything anymore. You know, you don't have your iPod that, you know, you take your CD, you throw it in iTunes, and then you sync your iPod with it. People don't do that anymore. And at the same time, that same CD that you made that digital copy from that you could then play on a modern smartphone you know can still be played in a it can still be played in you know a player from 1984 you know just having that wide but now people are just kind of you know whatever whatever the case may be they're like well it's old you know it's a couple of years old so it there's there's no there's no value in it anymore nice so we chuck dynamite in the fucking outhouse toilet nice I guess I should probably use this, given that it is postal. Get over here. 
Damn. I just find that backwards compatibility really appealing. And unfortunately, you know, people in their rapid desire for progress just kind of say, oh, you know, there's, there's, really, there's really no need for this anymore. You know, we have, we have streaming now. I was in a chat, which I'm now out of because I, I don't really think that chat was for me, to be perfectly honest. But I was in a chat for a little while where it was uh, people who are fans of uh, a musician I like. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know why I really care not to say it, but uh, you know his name is Brad Sucks, and I was in his Discord for a little while, and he and a couple other people in there were actually pretty big music fans naturally because he's a musician. Um, but I was the only one in there who kept a physical music collection. Everybody else just used Spotify, and I'm like, I don't see the I don't see the appeal. You know, you can have things taken away from you right away. There's no there's no ownership there. You are literally renting out. Don't get me wrong. That's appealing on its own, but it's not a replacement. And he was like, oh, well, it's way more appealing. It's way more convenient. You know, I don't have to keep a physical music collection. It's like, well, what do you own in that case? I get it. You know, it's appealing not to own stuff. You know, it's appealing not to have a whole bunch of junk around. But it, I guess it's just like, how can you... How do you... Hold on. Four. Smells like chicken. There we go. How are you attached at all to your music? If it's all kind of just the same. It's all just kind of streaming. You know? To me, in my head, there is a huge disconnect between an album I have on Spotify and the listening to an album that I have on Spotify and listening to the actual album that I own. And I get that it's cool not to own stuff. It's cool to not have a ton of uh, clutter in your house. It's cool to have, to basically be renting stuff. I guess that's the hipster way of doing it. And I get that it is convenient. Don't get me wrong. As much as I like owning stuff, I also see the appeal of Spotify as a sort of testing bed for music that I'm interested in. You know, somebody's like, oh, this this is album. This this uh, album's really good. You should try it out. And then I try it out, you know. And um, it's like, if I like it, I will likely seek it out in physical. If I don't, then, you know, whatever. If I only like a couple tracks, whatever. I'll just listen to those couple tracks. So I'm not saying you need to own every single album you listen to. But, like, there's a better way to do it than just giving up all of your consumer rights for the convenience factor. And I, I've seen people who are like, oh, well, CDs are inconvenient. Having to rep all those CDs is inconvenient. And yes, I can understand. And I can kind of agree. When I, my, you know, 5K iMac died, which is what I had my music library on, which is another reason why I need to back up my music library. Having to go back through and re-rep, I didn't re-rep all of my CDs. I only ripped the ones that I actually wanted to listen to or the ones that i had listened to and that i really liked um but we have been so spoiled i guess by streaming where you put in a song title and 10 seconds later you're listening to it what the fuck i get it that's convenient that's really nice it lets you listen to whatever you want but on some level Aren't you, uh, it doesn't it devalue your music? Doesn't it say, like, you don't own any of it at this point? Oh, more protesters. All right, hold on. Damn. There we go, got him. Whew. I gotta figure out where you turn this book. I think in here. There we go. I hope the bitch appreciates the trouble I went to. Flash media is an all right way to store things, but per gigabyte, it is definitely a whole lot more expensive than. Sorry, I'm late. Somebody blew up my car. Let's burn some books. 
than hard drives, even CDs. That's why I think for long-term data storage, I think I would still rather go with a mechanical hard drive. But I do see the appeal in having, you know, an SD card, even though I invariably lose them. I gotta get the fuck out of here. Everything is on fire. I gotta get the fuck out of here. I think I should be able to make the jump just down here. Yeah, there we go. That's the that's the fastest way to get out of here. Can we all just get along? Guess not. I better watch out for those guys from now on. I guess I'm just not ready to give up. You know. A proper MP3 player. Giving up a dedicated music storage device that lets me have a distraction-free listening experience. Because when people talk about the experience of listening to music, there's a weird sort of... Uh, like, people are focused on the wrong thing, I suppose. And I'm so done of just wandering around aimlessly. I'm going to save the game and probably never play it again. I don't know. It's more fun when I can go bug fuck, but I am very tired. So I'm just going to go talk to chat uh, or ramble because I can do that. You know, it's my stream if I want to, although there's probably not a whole lot to to watch in that respect. Um, but that's all right. It's perfectly fine. You can stare at gay art, I suppose. Um But when people talk about the music listening experience, they seem to be focused on the wrong thing. You know, there is, for the average person, I guess just having your phone and just having Spotify is good enough. But is it good enough for me? No, I wouldn't say so. Because... I like the feeling of packaging, you know, I like having a physical thing, you know, and I have, here, hold on, not that you'll be able to see this, but I have my CDs all right next to me. Um, I like the convenience of being able to pull a CD off of my rack, and, you know, I have a copy of Erlenmart's Everyone Down Here right now, and you open it up, and there are things to read, there are liner notes. First off, the music is a physical thing, you can have it. And it's an enhanced CD, too. And you know how much I love enhanced CDs. Um, there's a physical thing to it. There's liner notes. You pull this thing out of the side. Come on. Come on. There we go. And there is an outright fucking poster with the album name on the one side. And the lyrics on the other side. And a bunch of hand-drawn ships. You know? It's a neat little thing. It's got character to it. And lyrics. You know? It's more than just owning... Or, you know, streaming the album. Which you can stream the album. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with streaming the album. You know? But... I, I want to have that option, I suppose. I want to have that option. And I want to have... My... Uh, I want to have my choice with how I listen to it. If you're streaming it, all you have is an app on your computer or an app on your phone. That is all you have. If you don't have an internet connection, you're fucked. Now, don't get me wrong. You can save music with Spotify if you happen to be on your phone. If not, not with your computer, because you know then people would rip things off Spotify, and that that would be bad. Um, but if you have the CD. You can, again, not only listen to it in a ton of, you know, older players, you can listen to it in any fucking Discman. I don't know if there were Discmans for mini-discs, but I think some of them were CD. 
And maybe all of them are CD. I don't know. You can listen to them in any kind of CD player. You can rip them using any kind of computer, you know, CD drive and rip them and then transcode them to whatever format you want using whatever you want because at that point it's just raw audio. You can play them in Winamp still. You can play them in the old versions of Windows Media Player. You can play them in iTunes. Uh, Spotify has an option for local music. I don't know anyone who uses that, but, you know, because the people who use Spotify always seem to be at one extreme or the other. Or, uh, you know, I don't see people who have a huge music collection and then also use Spotify. Or at least nothing in CD format. And I suppose that is where I kind of split from everybody else who still buys physical. Because a lot of the people who still buy in physical are buying vinyl. And I have a couple vinyl on my floor right here. So, and I have a, I have a turntable. It's not a great turntable. It's an Audio-Technica LP60. It's just the, pretty much the most basic thing that isn't a fucking Crosley. Um, and I'd like to maybe get an LP120 or something a little bit nicer when I'm, you know, I don't have, when I have money, I guess. Um, and when I have a little bit nicer of a setup. But... A lot of people, I feel, just kind of buy vinyl as a status symbol, and that's sort of the, that's sort of the reason why I'm not 100% on board with the you know the vinyl revolution because people are like, oh, you know, we're we're uh, we're bringing life back to music, you know, people are buying vinyl, and a lot of people will look at that and they'll go, you know, they just see that there's there's something missing to a digital file, man, you know, they're seeing the the power, they're seeing the value of vinyl. The thing is, the vast majority of people who are fucking buying vinyl, do you know what they're buying? They're buying modern-ass digitally recorded albums on vinyl. Or they're buying dad rock. Like, if I go to... If I go to the Wikipedia article on vinyl records, I think I can actually see... It might be a couple years out of date. But I can see uh, at least one year of this decade uh, what people were buying. Yeah, so the 2012 vinyl LP charts. The top 10 albums that people bought in the U.S. and people bought in the U.K. Let me read to you this list of just the U.S. ones first. And then I'll read to you the top 10 in the U.K. So number 10 is fucking the self-titled Bon Iver record. That album came out in 2011. I guarantee you it was digitally recorded. And as a result, it pretty much negates the reason you listen to vinyl in the first place. Which is that it's all analog you know people are like oh you know there's so much more intricacy to it to an analog signal but that's nonsense the only thing that's there is you don't have a sample rate you have an upper floor of how high the frequencies can go with a digital sound with an analog one there really isn't and in fact a lot of vinyl does have a frequency response up into the 30 kilohertz 45 kilohertz range but it's all ultrasonic there's no meaningful audio content up there and there's really no meaningful audio content above 20 kilohertz that's why i don't get hd audio when i see people buying albums at 48 kilohertz sometimes seeing vinyl rips at 96 kilohertz it's like listen there's nothing up there and unless you're really listening for it you're not going to be able to notice you know in the normal situations where you would normally listen to an album, you're either listening to it at home with your utmost attention, which means you're probably listening to it on speakers, which means you're really not going to be hearing the full fucking frequency response in the first place because they're speakers. They're loud. You know? You're not going to be paying attention to, like, the, 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 the super detailedness of, like, the tweeters or something like that. I'm sure... I'm sure that there is, and I like speakers, you know, I have a big stereo setup right here. So, but it's, you're not going to be getting as close up a listen as you would if you're listening on headphones. And if you're listening on headphones and you're at home, I, I, I mean, I know people who do that. I don't get it. Again, I'd rather use my stereo. The time I use headphones is when I'm out and about and that means you have to be paying attention to what's around you, first off. And second, it's probably going to be noisy. So, in that case, you might not even notice lossy compression, let alone a higher sample rate. 
So when people are like, oh, vinyl has all of these intricacies, A, you're not going to notice them. You wouldn't be able to ABX them. And uh, B? Did I say A? B. Um, it's a digitally recorded thing anyway. So assuming you have, say, they recorded the album 24-bit uh, at, what, 48 kilohertz or something like that in the studio. Well, one of those is pretty much just the noise floor, which on vinyl is so incredibly high anyway, you're not going to notice the difference. And you're still going to be seeing, if you were to like, I don't know, put a, a digitally recorded album on a spectrum, on a spectrograph, you're still going to be seeing an eventual cutoff. Or eventually you're just going to be seeing noise up there. So what are you really gaining from this digitally recorded album on vinyl? It just seems ridiculous to me, especially an album if it was, say, home recorded, especially if it was an album that, say, somebody made with a whole lot of loops. You know, basically, it spent its entire life as a project file in a DAW, and now you bought it on vinyl. What's the point? I don't get it. I get the idea of buying older records on vinyl, and again, we're going to get to that, but with the newer stuff, I don't see the point. It's not how it was meant to be listened to. And that's why I don't get when I see a lot of modern records be split up into two discs. Because you're getting like three songs aside. That's not how the album was meant to be listened to. The album was meant to be listened to, it was probably mastered either for CD or for Spotify, which means you listen to it all the way through without interruptions. Do you notice that old records always have like the longer kind of drawly ballad thing? They always have that at the end of the side usually around track five or six and then at the tail end of the record that's because the inner grooves of the record have less dynamic range than the outer grooves because they physically have less space to pack in grooves uh you know there's just there's just less material in the inside of the disc than the outside of the disc so everything was mastered for that format whereas you know when you have a uh, you know a newly recorded record that was sequenced and recorded for digital when you put that on vinyl that's not how it was meant to be listened to and if that is how it was meant to be listened to then there's a good chance it was probably recorded analog anyway and certainly if somebody has that much attention to detail then yeah maybe it is worth buying on vinyl and occasionally you'll get an album that was outright remixed for vinyl a good example is stadium arcadium by red hot chili peppers you know that album sounds like ass on CD. It sounds fantastic on vinyl. It is one of the few double discs I'm actually looking to get because I just really like the album, first off. And second, it has a demonstrably better mix than the CD, which is smashed to hell. There's no dynamics. Uh, another example of that is the uh, archival version of There's Nothing Left to Lose by the Foo Fighters. Uh, the CD version of that, which I have, is you know very smashed, but... It has this noticeably better, and I think some of the tracks actually have an outright alternate mix by uh, Adam Casper. I think Aurora is, is the, the big one I'm thinking of. Um, it's a noticeably different experience on vinyl because of the actual mix itself. But if we're talking about a regular-ass modern record that was done in Pro Tools, done in, you know, anything, and then mastered for digital sequenced for digital and the version that comes on the cd and the version that got sent to the pressing plant are the exact same all you're getting with vinyl is the same experience the same smash dynamics the same uh you know overblown equalization of the digital version but you're getting it on vinyl where you have to deal with a higher noise floor you have to deal with potentially switching out and flipping the record definitely flipping it but potentially switching it out for a second disc uh, for what? For what purpose? Because you get big album art? No, absolutely not. Anyway, so getting back to this list, number nine, 21 by Adele. It's another digitally recorded album. It's a pop album. What would be the point of buying this on vinyl? I don't understand. Uh, number eight is Boys and Girls by Alabama Shakes. I've never heard of it, but it looks very new. Yeah, 2012. So that's, that's recent. Number seven is another Bon Iver record. Again, very recent. Uh, number six is fucking Beach House. Are you kidding me? Number five is Mumford and Sons. Number four is El Camino by the Black Keys. Another Mumford and Sons. Number two is Abbey Road by the Beatles. Which 
I don't I don't understand. That's another thing I don't understand about vinyl is when people buy a modern repress of a record because it, you know there's the potential that it's going to be a different mix, which potentially means you're going to be getting something smashed sounding. It's not it's not really worthwhile. But not even just that. There is it, it's 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 not going to be any better than you know a good quality old version of the record which was cut with probably higher quality equipment that's the thing about all of these analog formats is that because people's kind of fascination with them is all very hobbyist it's all very kind of just you know you're flirting with it they're not really putting out the best quality uh uh equipment to be able to play this stuff and to master this stuff uh there was a video that techmon did not too long ago where he had uh basically made the 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 point that there are there's nobody who's making uh cassette uh what do you call that mechanisms cassette mechanisms for players other than like one cheapo manufacturer in china and that's what they all use it doesn't matter if you're buying a shitty device or a high-end device if it comes with a modern cassette player they are all using the same mechanism and it's not a great mechanism either uh and that's because there's no reason to be producing really high quality cassette anything anymore and it's really unfortunate so that's that's the, that's the the kind of thing we're talking about and you you'd see a lot of weird kind of special editions of records where they would be like half speed mastered or uh the master disc would be some kind of special uh cut you know or something something akin to that i'm mostly thinking of like half speed mastering and things like that they don't do that anymore uh they they, they very much don't so you're getting a bog standard version of this album and that's it when most likely there are like six or seven copies of fucking abbey road in your nearest record shop so like what's the point especially since they overcharge for vinyl i've seen vinyl discs go for 50 60 dollars fucking massively expensive siamese dream by the smashing pumpkins went for like 50 dollars in my my mall's fye why why that's an incredibly common album and i guarantee you i can get fucking vinyl copies of it for way cheaper online but, oh, wait, it's a special remastered version of the album that comes on two discs. Okay, fine. We get your point. But I guarantee you, because the album was meant to be listened to on CD, you're going to be getting a better experience just listening to it on CD. Or, hell, even on Spotify, you're probably going to be getting a better experience. So, like, I don't, I don't get it. You listen to the album how it was meant to be listened to. If it was made for vinyl, you know, like an older kind of record, like something from the 70s or the 80s, you listen to it on vinyl. Even the CD version can be potentially lacking, in which case you would indeed get it on vinyl. If it's something from like the late 80s or like the early 90s or something, potentially you can get it on tape. Potentially you'll be getting a good experience on tape, especially if it's a chrome tape or a metal tape. You know, like a really high quality kind of uh, tape formulation was used. I have a couple of audiophile quality chromium tapes. They sound great, but nobody makes them anymore. So any modern tape, that you buy is going to be ferric it's going to have fucking a high noise floor it's going to not sound particularly great but that's all people make again getting back to that idea that you know people are just kind of like toying around with this stuff so they, they don't bother they don't bother doing anything that's particularly high quality because people don't care and it's just it's just doing these formats sort of a disservice you know um but getting to the UK top 10 list, just to read it off, number 10 is The Wall. Again, why would you buy a repressing of The Wall? You can buy... It was a common record. Just buy a used version. Uh, number 9 is Go Go Boots by Drive-By Truckers. Who the fuck are Drive-By Truckers? That's weird for the UK. That's a southern rock band, I guess. Alt-J and Awesome Wave. That's a, that's a very digital record. Again, Beach House. Number six is Tempest by Bob Dylan. Is that a new... Yeah, that's... Why would you listen to a new Bob Dylan? What are you doing? Number five is Lonerism by Tame Impala. Okay. Another, again, Adele. Oh, and I didn't mention the number one for the U.S. list is Blunderbuss by Jack White. And 
That's the only example of buying a modern record that I can understand because it was meant for vinyl. Jack White is kind of no known for uh, being, you know, a big fan of vinyl and really pushing vinyl. Like my copy, I own uh, Consulars of the Lonely by uh, the Raconteurs. I own that on CD and I own it on vinyl. And aside from one single pressing error at the start of the disc, uh, the vinyl has a inf has an infinitely better master. You know, it's not smashed like the CD version. That is, again, the only example of buying a modern vinyl I can understand that makes sense. So you really have to pay attention. If you're going to be playing around with these formats, you have to be going with what makes sense. You have to be going with what will get you the best experience, not just, oh, it's big album art, you know? Okay, it's big album art. Congrats. Is that, is that early the appeal? You might as well get a fucking poster. Uh, but yeah, number three and number one on the US one was Blunderbuss. Uh, number two was Ziggy Stardust. Again, you just get a used copy of it. And number one is Coexist by the... I don't... Is that the XX? Is that how you're supposed to say it? That's a stupid band name. That's a stupid band name. But that's okay. Um, so yeah, in 2012, that's what people were buying on vinyl, and it's either modern records that were recorded digitally, or it's older, or it's older records that were repressed that you might as well just buy an old copy of, which will probably be mastered better, in all honesty, and you'll have more choices of, uh, pressing, you know, you'll be able to make sure that you get a... Uh, you know the the most ideal quality copy of this album because pressings occasionally go bad uh, especially with a longer record that they try to stuff only on one disc you know you'll be getting really not great dynamics because they can't really make the they can't really cut the grooves all that deep which really limits your dynamic range um because otherwise the needle will just fucking the groove will literally collapse because there's so many of them on that disc and that's why they cut, by the way, modern records onto two discs. So that way they can space the grooves out properly. But that's my point. You're not really using the format effectively because the album wasn't meant for that. I own, for example, Carnivus and Swoon by the Silver Sun Pickups on vinyl. And they're both double discs. But they were both meant for fucking digital. So all you're getting is three songs aside, potentially two songs aside for some of their longer tracks because they, they write like four to six minute songs. And, you know, you have three of those and suddenly you're hitting the 18 to 20 minute fucking side length uh, ceiling. I don't get it. Just listen to the digital copy of it. You're not getting anything from the vinyl that you're not getting from the CD other than their, their big artwork. Which, God, it's so easy to impress people. It's all just a fascination. It's not about listening to the music. It's just kind of like a weird consumerist. And that's where I depart from people, is that I'm looking for music in the best possible format to listen to a particular album in. And if it's an older record, I'll probably be listening to it on a record. I'll probably be listening to it on cassette. I won't be listening to the digital version unless the digital version happens to be something like, say, a MoFi reissue of it. Um, you know, Mobile Fidelity Sound Labs. Like, I'm currently on the lookout for a uh, MoFi version of R.E.M.'s debut, Murmur, because I've actually listened to that version quite a bit, and it sounds infinite. Like, the tracks that are on Murmur that were on Eponymous sound infinitely better on the MoFi version of uh, Murmur that I had, that I had torrented. And now I'd like to get it in physical, because, and also that's a gold disc, so it's, you know, less likely to get corroded. It probably doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but hey. It's nice to have. And that was, you know, taken from the master tapes and, you know, some MoFi reissues, some people will have kind of issues with, they'll be like, well, it's not that much different than the normal record. And I, I mostly agree. Um, but this one does noticeably sound better. You know, it has more presence, more bass to it. So I would prefer to get that, you know, again, I'm looking for the best experience and, you know, Getting it on vinyl, I own it on vinyl. I own a modern repress of it, but it's, it's still on vinyl, and it sounds good. I think the speed is a little weird on mine. Uh, either the speed or the pitch. I think it it sounds a little weird compared to my digital copy is what I'm saying. Um, but I own it on vinyl. Um, 
whatever will get me the best experience when I'm listening to an album is how I'll buy that album. But a lot of people don't think like that. They just kind of like, oh, this is an album. And hey, I can get the album, but it's really big. So I will buy that. And it's a really easy way to bilk retards out of money. And it's a really great way to devalue a legitimately good and unique format because rampant consumerism. I don't know. I, I don't like the way that music is devalued nowadays. I, I'm not crazy about the whole audiophile thing where people just kind of go nuts and they spend $1,000 on fucking gold cables that were like blessed by the Pope or something. I don't care for that. But I do want to make sure that to a point I'm getting, you know, are my speakers good? Which I don't, I don't know. These speakers are all right. I will eventually get to a proper hi-fi setup at some point. Are my headphones good? You know, and is what I'm using to listen to this stuff good? Am I using like a high quality tape deck? Am I using, you know, a high quality uh, turntable? Which is another reason why I'd like to eventually upgrade my turntable. Potentially get something that can play 78s. I don't know. I don't really listen to anything from that old. Uh, but, you know, it'd be nice to have that option. Um so within limits, yeah, I'm looking for the best possible experience and the best possible sound. A lot of people, I guess, don't really think like that. So my whole rant over, when it comes down to experience, you know, for the most part with the music that I listen to, which is from the you know early 90s to modern day, that's kind of the vast majority of my library, I will get it on CD so I can have, you know, the packaging, I can have a lossless copy of the album, I can have a physical copy of the album that I can then rip, transfer, send, you know, tracks to people if I really want to, what have you. Most of the time that will be on CD. And uh, what I've been really into lately is also, you know, being able to put the stuff on iPods. You know, I've recently picked up another Shuffle. Uh, the actual first gen iPod Shuffle, and I'm holding it right here. It's a little plasticky thing. This is my first ever iPod, and I actually really like this thing because it's just so. It's got physical controls on it. You know, you don't see bits like this. You know, Apple kind of devalued, ironically enough, devalued putting physical buttons on things. I think Steve Jobs basically wanted no buttons on uh, the iPhone. Uh, I might be. I might be confusing that with something, but you get my point. He's like, no, have have nothing but a touch screen, basically. You know, no physical controls. Um, and while, yeah, a phone is going to do the same thing as the shuffle or, you know, a nano or something akin to that, the experience is, is very, very, very different, you know. Um, just having a dedicated player I don't think is an obsolete thing, even though people want to stream stuff. And, you know, that very much came into focus just today when again i just mentioned a tech loan video mentioning him again he actually just put out a video today uh or actually yesterday about a 40th anniversary sony walkman and what this was is a 400 pound fucking ipod touch running android it's literally a walkman app and the the, the special thing about it is that you have uh, you know, you can turn on a little cassette visualizer that will change the type of tape, you know, depending on if you're listening to an MP3 or a FLAC file or a, you know, whatever the fuck. I was like, that's great and all. That's, that's, that's very fantastic. But um, it's the same thing as what you're getting on a smartphone. Just, it's Wi-Fi only. Calling this a dedicated player is an insult. You know, with a dedicated player, the appeal is that it's just me and my music. If you take an iPod out for a walk with you, you're not going to be constantly distracted by things popping up. Like, I can't get away from Discord, and partially that's by my own design, but I have, like, push notifications on. If I want to turn off push notifications, I can either go into my settings and do that and just have the one, have the one device... Or I can have dedicated devices for when I want to shut off and be able to visually and spatially separate what I'm doing from my phone. Because if I'm on my phone, 
then frankly, it doesn't matter if I have push notifications on or not. I'm most likely going to be checking Discord anyway because that's where my friends are. That's where people are talking. I don't want that. I want to shut all of that off for like the 20, 30 minutes I'm on a walk. So I have a dedicated player. And I don't think people really prize dedicated players. And it's really weird to me because you know, it wasn't that long ago that dedicated players were like the thing. MP3 players were the thing. iPods were the thing. And then the iPhone comes out. And then Apple totally shits the bed and creates the iPod Touch, which is basically an iPhone without the phone part. And, you know, now now the music app is barely even there because, again, people just download a streaming app. And it's like, it's just, it all kind of melds together into background noise, into just this ambient fuzz that's always present. And it totally devalues it, at least for me. I know I can barely focus on typing something when I have, you know, music going. I have to literally pause. Sometimes I will listen to a song while I'm talking to somebody, pause it, write out my message, listen to 10 seconds of this song, and then pause it again to write another response because conversation. Like, that's literally how I work. I can't think with music on. I don't know how people do it, uh, or at least when I'm typing, you know, when it's you know, just me working on something like with my hands or something, that's a little bit different. But when I'm typing, you know, when I'm interacting on the internet, I cannot handle having music going. I don't know how people do it where they have, you know, YouTube playing away, you know, God forbid listening to someone fucking talk or listening to music or something akin to that. Um, while they do stuff it's like how do you focus and i think the answer is that people don't focus and i think it's just it just kind of wears us out is my point so i don't really have a point to this this rant and i'm probably going to get going in a moment but yeah i i I just think it's it's sad and especially especially from a waste perspective how many ipods are out there now that are going to be totally fucking unused and they're just going to be gotten rid of I find it kind of unfair. And that's not, not even to count the other MP3 players. You know, you have your creatives, uh, you have your Zunes, you know, you have, and I mean, granted, cheap in, cheap out. So I, I get that cheap MP3 players were kind of meant to be thrown away. But the higher end ones, the stuff that's name brand, you know, that's, that's you know, a decent bit of kit right there that's just gone, you know? Because people are like, well, it's not, it doesn't do Spotify. I can't scrabble from it. it. I don't know. I feel like the way that in the span of like 17 years, we've gone from a thousand songs in your pocket to your phone and who gives a shit. I don't know. I feel like it's kind of sad and I feel like we kind of moved too fast. But um, at least the iPods will be cheaper, except for the classics because the, everybody goes for the classics. They're very expensive. Um yeah hi dcb you caught me right at the end of a big fucking rant about uh stuff oh i forgot you're going to the robotics competition nice (laughs) oh man we were wondering where you were all day i went to cabbie and i was like it's been quiet all day it's been quiet you know i wonder where everyone is and i didn't expect borb to fucking show up because borb sleeps half the goddamn day um i'm gonna bother her about that the next time i see her but uh yeah good to see you're still kicking because it's been quiet all day um you caught me right at the end of a stream that i was just uh oh damn press f yeah caught me at the end of a very very uh long rant about the way people listen to music and you know the stuff we kind of always talk about in the chat uh the way that modern music listening habits have changed so fast that we've essentially created a lot of waste for no real benefit in fact to the detriment of the music but um that's just me i'm probably gonna throw a record on i might throw on this shellac record because it was actually the one i grabbed oh and that's another thing another mini rant about vinyl i hate when it's literally just a sleeve and then a paper insert you didn't even try this shellac record is made out of like a weird kind of papery cardboard. It's not glossy. It is very matte. Like this is a proper, I wish you could see it. This is at action park, their debut. It's like proper paper. And you know, it's a gatefold. 
It's a gatefold where the the record is just kind of in its own paper sleeve, you know, inside. It's not the flimsy paper. It's like a cardboard ish. And there's this like really great uh, scribbly kind of scene on the insert of Action Park itself, uh, where it's kind of all of the. I think it's all the songs. I see Il Porno Star. I'm looking for some of the other songs. I guess not, but it's just a crazy little thing. You could tell they gave a shit about the packaging for this, you know? And it makes sense, because it's Steve Albini. And Steve Albini is just like Jack White, where he, he gives a fuck. Um, but when I see a modern vinyl record, where it's just this glossy version of the record, just a big, big enough to fit the record itself, and then a paper insert, and you don't even get, like, a lyric sheet or anything, and it's just like you didn't even try you know, I just, I find that really insulting, especially for the more expensive ones. It's like, give a shit. That's another, that, that goes for CDs too, by the way. CD booklets. A lost art. CD booklets. Um, but yeah. Good to see you're still around. I'm, I have been rambling on for how long now? I think I stopped it like a half hour ago. So yeah, it's been a half hour straight talking. Um, I just didn't quite feel like uh, playing Postal 2 anymore. So, yeah, I'm probably I'm probably going to head off. But, uh, you know, hey, I, I at least streamed. But, hey, if you're still here, um, thank you. <laughs> you must really like me. I don't know if I'd listen to me. Maybe I would. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, actually, who is still here? I know DCB, most likely. Probably Cabby. Hi, Cabby. And you've been out all day, so I want to get in bed and uh, drift off. Rambles and guns, that's kind of what the stream has been. It's a sleepier stream. Um, that's all right. They don't all have to be crackers, you know. They don't all have to be a hoot and a half. Hey, at least I know that the stream is still working. That wasn't a one-off of just being really great. And it's funny because my internet was really spotty earlier. I wasn't sure if uh, this was going to happen. So it did. I'm cool. I might actually... I should put on Van Sire. I feel like that's, uh, that's good for right now. Just put it on and fall asleep to it. It's, it's, uh, it's as good as any, you know. My, my throat very much needs a rest, but... Thanks for thanks for coming out and listening to me ramble about music and, and what have you. And I I hope that the next stream will be something a little bit more interesting. I think I might actually have to start getting your requests. I uh I was debating Mon's Parappa thing, kind of, but I I don't know, I've never played it and I mean it looks alright. It's just I mean, I should like it. I should like it. That's kind of the thing with all requests, though, is that I'm like, eh, until I actually do it, and then I like it. Uh, I was thinking, um, I'm not sure how Kami would work on a stream, but that's a potential one. I don't know how it would work on Dolphin, because that's a game that requires a lot of gestures. I'd probably have to try it on my actual Wii first. Uh, how do you say that? Toho? Toho? I don't know how you say that. I mean, that's a bullet hell shooter, ain't it? Yeah, I know. Because you've been bothering me about playing Mukami for a long time. I might as well play it on stream, you know, for you. Um, because otherwise I'm never going to get to it. But hey, at least you can watch it and spurg about it in the chat and if borb's there then hey the chat will never shut up and it's not necessarily a bad thing it's all right to like things it's just the contrarian and me being the contrarian and me i'll probably like it too i just it takes me a little bit um i still have to get to fucking stardew valley too don't know if that's necessarily gonna be a stream one i'd like to still play it um mm. Yeah, Wolf of stream. That's basically it. Wolf of stream. Um, 
You know what also I'm really late on, but I still need to play? Terraria. I, I should like that game because, you know, it's... I've heard it's really good. I've just always put off playing it despite it being one of the first games that I bought on Steam. I don't know. There's a whole lot that I could play that I just kind of I just kind of need to get to. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll take maybe I'll take a little while, but I'm always busy. See, I thought it was like a 2D Minecraft, but um, I hear that's also not entirely accurate. I don't know. I've never played it. Frankly, I've never really looked into it. I know Borb liked it though. And I still have uh, Ori to play, and I still have... I think I was still working on 100%ing Dust and um, Bastion. But I'm kind of without a controller at the moment, because my 361, kind of, the bumper fucked up on it. I don't know, maybe I'll look into like an X-input wrapper and see if I can use my uh, RafNet and my classic controller for that. Uh, it's all things to play. All things to play. I just need to get to it. So hopefully hopefully next week I'm a little bit less sleepy and hopefully more people are here and you know, we'll get to uh we'll get to uh one of the requests most likely. And one of you can rejoice and watch as I utterly fucking fail at video games again. It's just how it goes. I'm not terrible at them. But I'm I'm rambling and I have a I always eat my own hair accidentally. Nasty. Happens when you've got long, fantastic hair like I do. I'm going to go now. So <laughs> thank you very much for listening in. I am Marito. As always, I'll see you next Saturday, my friends. And since I didn't say it last time, fuck off.